To God be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I just want to honor the Father for each and every one of you. And to bring this word to each and every one of us, that the Lord is what? Is releasing provisions for a lot of people in this hour. You know, the Bible says, I will give you treasures according to Isaiah and chapter 45. I will give you treasures of darkness. I will give you treasures. I will give you treasures. That's what the Bible tells us. And for that reason is why the Lord is releasing in this hour, you know, is releasing in this hour provisions for a lot of people. He's giving you hidden treasure, the treasure that has always been, but you did not see it right from the very beginning. It's not that he didn't want to give it to you. It has always been there. But the reason why you had not seen it yet was because he had been removing the limitations, first of all. You know, the Bible says, except, you know, the law, it says, upon this rock, I will build. So upon the rock that Christ is, is building. But then, first of all, he has to remove the limitations that can hinder from that being built. So, hence the reason we've been looking at, you know, the, 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 the limitations of finances, the roots and things like that, removing them. So that eventually when the blessing is released to you, you can what? Then you will not lose that blessing to those accusations. Like I said. The enemy can accuse you for anything, even the things that you are not aware of. Can I give you an example? I remember when I was going through uh, my immigration um, uh, uh, challenge at that particular moment. And, you know, there was somebody who was there with us, you know, and she was a lovely person. And we've all been praying, trusting God and believing God. And it was time that I needed to go to the courts. And I was, you know, I'm like, Lord, I need money to basically be able to do this. And you know, in the process of that, asking this person, she said, yeah, I will help you out. You know, I will, I will basically give you some money towards it. And she did. Can you see that in itself? She did. You know, met up with this person. We had a conversation to God be the glory and she agreed to help. And after helping, you know, few years after that, you know, I began to hear like the Lord says, you know, the accuser is accusing you. And I'm like, why is he accusing again? What have I done this time? And he said, you see that person who helped you? She was a stripper. And I'm like, wow. So that is that the reason, you know, because she's mentioned it, but I didn't actually take it into fullness of what she said, you know, concerning that in itself, because I didn't look at that, you know, on the basis of whether she was or she wasn't. But the Lord was saying, because of your holiness to me is the reason why the accuser is accusing. So I had to repent of that. Can you see that in itself? So it's a place, you know, the Lord is showing, he has been showing the limitations of that so that when he blesses you, you are able to receive it. That's why he says in Isaiah 43, he says, I will give you hidden treasures, which is stored in secret places so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel who summons you by name. Can you see that? So he wants to give you hidden treasures, which is stored in secret places because for majority of you, he has removed the limitations. For majority of you, he has removed the hindrances. For majority of you, he has silenced the accuser. Because the Bible says, I saw Satan fall down like lightning. It says that what? The accuser has been hurled down. So because the accusations over your finances are finally being removed, uh, you know, concerning what he intends for, uh, for, to do for you, now he's able to release it to you in fullness. So I want to share this um, dream that I believe I was given. And the dream that I had was, it was a place where people had gone to war. Yeah, they had gone to war and upon fighting the war, you know, the people, you know, it was like somebody after, you know, from, from the war that was being fought, they were, they won the war basically. And upon winning that, you know, somebody now came and began to what? And began to bring, you know, treasures from the war, you know, gifts, fruits from the war. And I'm like, why am I receiving fruits from the war and things like that? You know, and this helped to understand the dimension of Abraham. Remember, Abraham went to battle. Can you see that dimension? So you can see that with Abraham, he went, he recovered all that was stolen. The Bible says in Genesis 14, 17, after Abraham returned from defeating Kedolama and the kings aligned with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shaveh. 
So you can see, the Bible says in verse 16, he recovered all the goods and brought back his relative lot and his possession together with the women and the people. So he recovered. Can you see? And then we see the dimension of this word of the dream in itself. The scripture that I was given concerning this dream, you know, because it was a place, this, you know, the Lord basically called it the spoils of war. So you can see that the spoils of war. So the people went to fight, but then they brought, can you see? They brought to whoever it is, you know, like, hey, this is what we basically got from what we went into. And this is where you understand that scripture that you are reaping where you did not sow. So majority of you is not like, you know, you engaged in the battle. It was the Lord who fought for you, but he's what? He's blessing you for all that you have what? All that you have been through. The Bible says here, in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, because this was the scripture that I was given concerning the dream. The Bible says, huh? it says here in verse 20, early in the morning, because the Bible tells us that they came to fight against Jehoshaphat. And when they came to fight against Jehoshaphat, the Lord says, hey, you know, this is not your battle to fight. I will be the one to fight the battle. As we see in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15, it said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or be discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. He gave them the warning again in verse 17. He says, You will not have to fight in this battle. Just take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you in Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Can you see that dimension? So we begin to see that what? The following day, they took a position. They began to what? They began to give thanks to the Lord. And in giving thanks to the Lord, that is why I said, you know, there are so many strategic what? Ways to fight in the spirit. So it could be prayer. It could be worship. It could be praise. So Jehoshaphat said, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. So as they began to praise and to sing, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. It says the Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against them, against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they had finished slaughtering them, the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So you can see, this was all that they did. Gave thanks, they sang praises, and they were just there rejoicing. And the Lord caused the enemy to turn against one another. And what happened right after that? The Bible says they saw dead bodies all over. And in verse 25, it says, So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder. Can you see? They were reaping where they did not sow. <laughs> You see how the enemy brought the provisions to them. And by thanking God, they destroyed one another. And he says, so Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder. And they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also article of value. More than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Beraka, where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Baraka to this day. Can you see that? Because the Bible says that they return joyfully to Jerusalem for God has caused them to rejoice over their enemies. So you can see the Bible says that what? He laid up the wealth of the unjust. For who? For the just. So this is where you're going to begin to see in the dimension of what? Of Exodus where they began to plunder the Egyptians. So the other people have worked for it and now you have entered into their labor. That is what Jesus basically helped us understand. He says that what? They have done the work and you have entered into their harvest. So those people, they did the pack. They basically gathered all that they needed. But the Israelites, they didn't have to do anything. They only gave thanks to God. They praised them and they plundered for three days. So you can see the amount of wealth that was what? That was being transferred. It's a wealth 
transfer. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? The spores of war. It's a wealth transfer. So everything that they had was transferred to them. So this is where majority of you, you're going to begin to receive wealth transfers. It's nothing that you have done, but in the spirit, you've done the work. You've praised God. You've thanked God. You've rejoiced for God. You've rejoiced in the Father. You've celebrated Him. You've celebrated. You've done all and you've been obedient to all that he has commanded you to do. Now you are entering into what? You are entering into their harvest. You are entering into their harvest. That's what Jesus called it. He said, others have done the work and now you have entered into their harvest. Can you see? All the people in 2 Chronicles uh, 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 chapter what? Chapter 20, they done the work and now Jehoshaphat went home for three days and began to plunder. <laughs> so the wealth transfer is happening in this season. So expect, can you see that? Expect wealth in this hour to be manifested in your life. Expect the provisions that you've been believing God to begin to manifest in your life. Whatever that what you have been believing with the Lord for, this is the hour that is what? That is manifesting in your life because the hour has what? The hour has come for you to reap where you did not sow. Why? Because you are chosen. The Lord has called you. This is the dimension of what he has already ordained for each and every one of you. Because a lot of you, you've, you've been thinking, do I have to go and begin to, you know, <laughs> do I have to go and begin to toil and to labor, you know, for me to be able to receive what the Lord has promised? There is a dimension for that where you have to work in order to be able to receive. And there is a dimension where you don't have to do anything, but it comes to you. Yes, it does. That's what Jesus said. Can you see? Let's read it together. John chapter 4, verse 37. It says, For in this case, the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. So what you sow, you will reap, is true. But I have sent you, can you see, to reap what you have not worked for. Can you see that dimension? So other people have done the work and now you are entering. It says that what? It says you have entered what they are. It says you have sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and now you have taken up their labors. You have entered into their labors. You have entered into what? You have entered into the result of their work. You have entered into it. So it's a place where, you know, that's why I've always encouraged people to what? Continue to walk in obedience because sometimes when you don't walk in obedience, you've done all the work. You've done all that needed to be done and now you give up. You say, I can't do this again. Now the Lord has to take that in which you have done and give it to somebody else who has what? <laughs> they didn't even pray for it. <laughs> they didn't even ask God for it but the Lord just bestows it on them because God has seen their heart and he knows that they are able to what? Walk in faithfulness in what God is giving to them. Have you seen that dimensional, that before? You didn't pray for it, but the Lord just blessed you with it. That's because somebody did not walk in obedience in what God has called them to walk in. So he took it and blessed somebody else with it. The people came against the children of Israel and he said, all right, you defeat one another. They destroyed one another. Jehoshaphat, you go in and clear the land of the goodies. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? That is the dimension of the word of the Father. And that is the spoils of war, the wealth transfer. Can you see that? We see it in the Bible too. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 7, they brought all the goodies to the front gates of what? Of Samaria. And then eventually they fled. Can you see that? And what happened? He says the king went there and he says what? Gather everything and bring it into the city. They didn't do the work. There was famine. And by the time Elisha came, he prophesied that by this time tomorrow, and what happened? They gathered it all and they brought it right in. And can you see? 
a bar of what was sold for a shekel a bar of valley <laughs> you know was sold for a shekel that's what the bible declares and this is when you're going to begin to see this dimension manifest upon creation wealth transfer somebody maybe somebody went to sleep and you did not know that they've put your name in their inheritance and they say hey i know this person maybe they didn't have any children they don't have anybody to leave it to and they said i've been watching this person i've been seeing what they have been doing now that i'm leaving i leave all that i have onto this person can you see that dimension and you know that's the wealth transfer somebody has done the work they've done all the work and now they're leaving you with the reward of their labor and this is where you're going to begin to see that manifest in creation and i pray <laughs> in this hour that this is the dimension that the lord is releasing over you so rejoice but i say rejoice because the time of that wealth transfer has arrived and this is the hour that you're seeing the spores of war manifest upon creation you are blessed you deserve it because this is what christ paid for on the cross and resurrected for so that you can enter into what has been ordained for you you are the joy of the lord go forth rejoice but i say rejoice i love you all so very much you are the blessedness of the father amen and amen